Hey guys, it's David again, and I, today I'm going to talk about this thing about changing plans. You may have noticed uh, in your own life that uh, from time to time, you know, we make plans and we sign off on it, and we think, you know, that's a pretty good plan. I've spent some time thinking about it, and I really think that plan is going to help me. And of course, we stick to that plan for maybe a day or two, and then for some reason, although initially that plan seemed like the best plan in the world. We start to sort of question that plan. We start to kind of undermine that plan and really experience a lot of doubt around it, right? And that, of course, leads to that indecision uh, of procrastination. So I'm going to read a question here, uh, well, part of a question, because it's quite a long one. And I'm going to give you five tips then at the end about how to overcome this. Because really, if you understand why this is happening, this questioning of a pretty sound plan you've developed, It'll make it a lot easier, right, to, to understand why it happens and it'll stop happening when we understand it. So the question here, and it's quite a long one, so, but I'm just going to read a, a bit of it. And uh, actually this question was in response to another video I made. But it starts off, it says, thanks for the video. I have a question though. How much, free, uh, how much guilt-free fun time would you say one should schedule in if they're starting from rock bottom? Okay, so an overcoming procrastination. I talk about the importance of scheduling in that uh, guilt-free playtime. Neil Fiore talks about that also. And, you know, if you're, if you're starting from rock bottom, I tell people to schedule in a heck of a lot of guilt-free playtime, okay? The, the, the more severely you're entrenched in the pattern of procrastination, the more seriously you have to take guilt-free playtime. So a lot is the answer to that question. At the moment, I set just one hour a day aside to show up and do productive stuff. And the rest of the time, I can technically do anything I want. Now, so far, I'm loving this plan. Okay, this plan sounds fantastic to me, especially if we're starting from rock bottom here, okay? An hour a day of productive work is work moving in the right direction. Sounds fantastic. But watch out for this indecision that's about to come in here, okay? It says, I but I find that often results in me feeling guilty because I have so much hidden expectations that maybe I'll feel productive and get more things done during the fun time. Okay, so now this guilt or this indecision is coming in and it's basically undermining this pretty sound plan that would have led us in the right direction had we been able to follow through with it and not feel you know, doubts about it. So the question goes on for a little bit longer and it's kind of a back and forth about what's the right approach, what's the right plan, how much free time should I have, should I be getting more done in the free time, and you know, trying to find this perfect right balance, okay? And this is kind of part of our issue with this, right? It's some, again, the plan is perfect. This plan is good enough. There's no perfect plan, right? So. If we can find out what, why this is happening, it'll make a lot of sense. And I'm going to show it to you here in picture form, what's actually going on. So actually a little quote that helps us here. And this quote is from Christina Imre, and it says, Give space to your thoughts, clear the noise in your head, chit-chat with your inner critic, decide and move on. So we're talking about listening, yep. We, in planning time, when we're pro proactively sitting down trying to figure out what's going on, yeah, we listen to the inner critic, okay, and we take on, uh, have a little chit chat with it, and we make a decision and we move forward. Now, what happens is actually often it's complex trauma or trauma from childhood that leads to this problem. Now, if we look at a picture here, it'll, it'll make more sense, right? In terms of your productivity in life, there's two things, and you can see them there on that picture at the bottom. There's two things that are actually trying to have a negotiation. And typically, well, those two things are your personality, which cares about your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, your hopes, your preferences, right? All those beautiful things, your creativity. That's all your personality, and you're born with that. That's an inherent part of who you are. Your personality deals with your nervous system. Right? And your nervous system couldn't care less about your goals, your hopes, your dreams, and your aspirations. Your nervous system has basically one function, and it is to keep you alive. Okay, it is survival, it is keep you safe. So it doesn't like you taking on too many big plans, and it will quite naturally warn you. It'll say, uh, you're doing too much, 
and they'll send you the warning usually through your emotional system okay now when things are going well those the, your personality and your nervous system are kind of strike, striking a nice balance okay and you can come up with a plan pretty easily and your nervous system will look at it and say okay personality will look at it and say that's okay and you'll pretty much just go ahead with that a nice balance between them both the problem is the trauma in childhood that we we carry from this and by trauma we're talking about maybe someone being very very critical towards us um, often over a long period of time maybe someone who undermines us maybe someone who is overly controlling of us doesn't give us any autonomy uh, but mainly it's that undermining thing we do something in psychology we call it interject we take that inside us so that later in life that person doesn't even have to be around but we carry that kind of relationship to ourselves, that critical undermining of ourselves. And that inner critic turns its attention to both your personality and your nervous system. It judges every aspect of yourself. So when you're trying to find this perfect plan for yourself, you might say, okay, well, um, being creative uh, might be important here. Inner critic will undermine that. You don't have time to be creative. Your nervous system might be telling you you need to rest more and maybe play more. Your inner critic will undermine your plan that has uh, guilt-free play in it. Okay, Basically, you can't win as long as the inner critic is in play, as long as it is the one in charge of being the, the judge of your plan. Okay, Any plan, you could develop the perfect plan, the most beautiful elaborate sophisticated plan and if that inner critic is there and we don't know how to talk to it and disarm it right it will undermine any plan we make so this is why we have this thing where we make a plan and a day or two in oh we're talk we're questioning we're doubting it make another plan a couple of days in we're undermining that one again it's the inner critic and this is coming from the past okay typically for most of us it's coming from the past so what we have to do clearly is we need to, well, here's the five tips I'm going to give based on what I've said so far, okay? I'm going to really kind of try and simplify it for, for everybody here. And the five tips I would say is, first of all, you don't want to find yourself attacking your nervous system, okay? Really, you and your nervous system, that part that wants to keep you safe, are actually on the same team, okay? There's nothing wrong with your nervous system. Your nervous system has an important job to do. So rather than question it ourselves, realize, oh, okay, the need for relaxation and, and to step away from work and to stop and rest is a very, very legitimate need. And it needs to be kept in balance with my ambition, my healthy ambition, my creative drive. So don't fight with your nervous system at all. In fact, see it as your best friend here in this scenario. Second thing I would say, second tip here for this is don't blame yourself when, when guilt and anxiety show up, okay? Because this guilt and anxiety is all coming from the past and it's perpetuated by that inner critic that we have with us. So if you think you're the only one that has this sort of inner critic that makes you feel guilty and anxious, I can promise you that that, could, that is the furthest thing from the truth possible, right? I'm, I don't really know anybody that doesn't have it to a certain degree. Okay, there's degrees with it, but it's so, so common. So the most important thing is when you just begin to notice it more and notice the effects that this inner critic, this guilt and anxiety is having on you. Okay, just notice, become an observer, become a, a watcher of it and noticer of it rather than even fighting against it. Now we do want to regain some control here from this and we'll talk about that now in a moment, which is number three. We want to start to question that inner critic. We don't want to start questioning your, your personality or your nervous system, which should be working uh, simpatico with each other. What we want to start questioning is this inner critic, this voice that undermines, this voice that puts everything in doubt and uh, it's, it makes us so indecisive. So we use things like CBT, we use things like uh, inquiry or journaling. We're really trying to question these old narratives, and old narratives like, uh, you have to work harder, you're not working hard enough, you're not good enough, it'll never work, it's hopeless, all that stuff, right? Especially it's not good enough. That's the big one that we get, right? True interjection. So find the tools, okay? And that's what I'm all about, is use, showing people how to use the tools to just quiet that inner critic and you'll find that the, uh, and, and you know, obviously prioritizing a nice balance between 
your creative inputs of your personality and your nervous system's need to keep you safe. There needs to be a nice kind of reconciliation between those two parts. But we need to start using those tools. Journaling is the, probably the simplest way I could put that. You'll find out a lot of it when, when you're just getting in touch with your self-doubt and all those, those different things. Journaling is a great way to get them down on paper and out of here. Okay, talking with somebody is another great way to do that, whether that be um, a professional or a good friend or a family member. So number four here, what I would say is, don't push yourself, but seek gradual progress. Okay, and so in that, that question that that person sent, it was, you know, they had a plan, and it was a plan that was going to lead to gradual progress. Now, it may not have been dramatic progress but it was definitely progress and that is all we're looking for here we're not looking for dramatic change necessarily we're looking for moving gradually in the right direction small steps baby step in this okay so that's number four and the last thing here the fifth tip is typically go with overestimating relaxation time okay so Oftentimes people are so surprised to find out that the solution for procrastination is compassion. Okay, and compassion means, God, like be kind to yourself. Give yourself plenty of relaxation time, more than probably your inner critic feels comfortable with. Okay, you overestimate the amount of time you're going to be spent in relaxation away from goal-related projects entirely with a very clear boundary around that. And to be kind of strict on the, the compassion that you're giving to yourself right if that makes sense it's kind of an oxymoron but it's it, it has to be like that that is the discipline for the time being it's discipline disciplined kindness for ourselves so the takeaway from today's uh, video guys is you will notice that this little voice comes in and undermines okay the the great plan that you may have had for yourself and just realize as long as your personality feels okay about it you feel excited about the, the, the thing initially and then you're, you're, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, my nervous system's happy with that. It doesn't feel threatened. It doesn't feel overwhelmed. It's not too much too soon. You can sign off on that plan. Then during the week, maybe you make that plan for yourself on Sunday or something. And then halfway through the week, you're noticing this doubt about your plan. Just realize that that doubt, that little voice of doubt is almost certainly this inner critic. Okay. That judges everything. It judges your personality and your nervous system. Okay, it judges across the board. So you can't win with that. So this is why the tools are so important. It's the quest to, to, to help that nerve, that, that inner critic just drift away. It can, it can be silent now. Okay, and as soon as that's silent, this whole drama goes away. And uh, it's very, very liberating. And uh, you'll notice that I haven't said anything in this video about pushing yourself or trying harder or trying more it's not about that because procrastination is not about uh, a lack of character or a lack of work ethic in fact oftentimes it's quite the opposite of that some of the most ambitious people i know suffer from procrastination chronically so so it's not about that but uh, in any case guys i hope that video was helpful and uh you can visit my site, there's, there's more uh, resources there. There's a book and a course as well if you'd like to learn more about this. And as always, you can just um, contact me on my website if you want to know more about this. But um, I'll leave it there for now. And thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.